This week at Starbase, as construction continues for the new Gigabay, Booster 15 is relocated to the launch site and Ship 38 goes through final preparations. With less than 48 hours to go before the scheduled launch of Flight 11, was SpaceX able to finalize the configuration at Pad 1 in time and is Ship 38 ready for flight? Let's dig into this week's update and find out. Starting off this week with our launch site construction updates, crews at the air separator site across from the launch complex began excavations to expose the tops of the new piles. These piles will be cut to the proper elevation, then additional concrete added to join them into the structure's actual foundations. Later in the week, several truckloads of concrete vaults were delivered to the site, likely to house underground plumbing and electrical for the air separator. Over at Pad 1, workers were seen removing the dampers from the chopsticks. With SpaceX's decision to perform another offshore landing on Flight 11, we have seemingly seen the final catch for this iteration of Pad 1, with plans for it to be reconfigured following the final Block 2 mission. By the time the pad is operational again, it will likely have a set of new, shorter chopsticks like we've seen on the other towers. On Sunday, a set of steel stairs was lifted and installed near the booster liquid oxygen quick disconnect terminal at Pad 2. On Wednesday, a crane was seen lifting several different steel cladding sections for installation on the outside face of the ground service gantry at Pad 2. Up the road at the build site on Thursday, crews began the process of erecting the first tower crane that will be used to help build the new Gigabay. We'll likely see four of these built in the future aisles of the building to help enable a quick construction pace. While the tower crane was still being assembled, one of SpaceX's mobile cranes lifted the building's first steel column and installed it on its embed, officially starting the erecting of the Gigabay's framing. Some testing was also seen this week on the chopsticks over at Pad 2. SpaceX performed actuation testing of both chopstick arms as well as the stabilizer arms that attached to the lower points of the ships and super heavy boosters. Venting was also seen coming from the Pad's methane pump farm as SpaceX tested out its systems there. Over at the Massey Outpost, test tank B18.3 underwent a fresh round of testing as the article was filled with cryogenics for the fourth time overall. Following detanking operations, workers could be seen in a lift to the left side of the tank, either welding or cutting. Back over at Pad 1, as crews work to prepare for the upcoming 11th integrated flight test, the booster quick disconnect interface was extended and retracted a few times, making sure everything is working properly ahead of Booster 15's return to the launch site. Later, a crane was seen lifting scaffolding materials out of the interior of the launch mount, likely following the work necessary to convert the infrastructure back to a booster interface following the static fire of Ship 38. We were treated to a gorgeous moonrise through the clouds behind the launch complex on Tuesday night while methane deliveries arrived and offloaded as flight preparations continued. On Wednesday morning, Booster 15 began moving in the rocket garden. In relatively short order, the flight-proven first-stage rocket was brought onto Highway 4 and taken down to the road to the launch complex. Following its arrival, it was taken over to Pad A and parked between the awaiting arms of Mechazilla. By that afternoon, preparations were complete and the chopsticks lifted Booster 15 off its transport stand and carefully transferred it to the launch mount for its upcoming date with Destiny. That night, with the booster now secure on the mount, both of the alignment pins were removed from the top of the launch deck in preparation for launch. The next afternoon, the launch mount work platform was lowered onto its stand, presumably indicating that SpaceX had completed work beneath the booster to prepare it and the mount for launch. A little later, the chopsticks released the booster, likely for the final time, and were lowered back to the base of the tower to await Ship 38 as the ship quick disconnect arm was returned to its resting position. That night, the detonation suppression system was tested as SpaceX continues to move down their pre-launch checklist, closing out items and bringing Flight 11 ever closer. In the early hours of Friday morning, a ship transport stand was moved into Mega Bay 2 as teams shifted to final preparations for Ship 38. Once the Starship had been transferred onto the stand and was waiting in the doorway of Mega Bay 2, a batch of Starlink satellite simulators was brought out of the Star Factory and over towards the awaiting ship. Throughout the day, Friday, SpaceX worked to get the simulators loaded into the ship for another test deployment during the upcoming flight test. 
It remains to be seen what, if any, adjustments will be made to the deployment sequence since the last mission. Once the dummy satellites were in the ship, the loading jig was lowered back down. Switching over to this week's Falcon 9 activity, early on Tuesday morning, Booster 1090 lifted off on its eighth launch as it sent 28 satellites to orbit from Space Launch Complex 40 for the Starlink Group 10-59 mission. The booster and both fairing halves were successfully recovered and returned to Port Canaveral for refurbishment. Just over nine hours later, Booster 1071 flew its 29th mission as it lifted off from the other side of the country, launching 28 satellites from Space Launch Complex 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base for the Starlink Group 11-17 mission. The rocket safely landed on Of Course I Still Love You and began its trip back to the California coast for refurbishment. Moving on to other space news, Tori Bruno shared a photo this week of the new swing arm that the company installed on their launch tower at Space Launch Complex 3E. This critical piece of hardware brings the company one step closer to being ready to launch their Vulcan rocket from the West Coast. United Launch Alliance also shared a photo and an update showing that they've begun stacking operations of the Atlas V rocket for the upcoming Viasat 3F2 mission. Astra shared footage of a test firing of their Chiron engine, which they purchased from Firefly. Two of these will be used to power the first stage of their new Rocket 4. PLD Space shared images and footage from their first round of engine qualification testing for their new Mira 5 rocket, which aims to be the company's first orbital class rocket. On Wednesday, Blue Origin's second new Glenn rocket was rolled past NASA's Vehicle Assembly Building on its way to Launch Complex 36 ahead of launch. CEO Dave Limp later shared photos of it in its pads integration facility, where it's being joined with its second stage prior to its static fire campaign. Firefly Aerospace posted photos of ongoing testing of preparations of Blue Ghost 2, the company's second mission to the moon. Currently, they're working to prove out the design for the dual payload attachment fitting on the Elytra Dark vehicle. Stoke Space announced that they've raised an additional $510 million, bringing their total funding to almost a billion dollars as the company works towards their first launch of their Nova rocket. Rocket Lab posted that they've completed payload integration ahead of their next launch, the OWL New World mission, which should launch in the next few days. This week, the great Greg Scott flew over the Cape, once again treating us to a fresh batch of aerial photos from the Space Coast. At Historical Launch Complex 39A, work continues at a steady clip on the site's Starship infrastructure. With the flame bucket now installed in the trench, assembly of the Buckner-owned Lieber LR-13000 has begun nearby. This type of crane is the largest conventional crawler crane. It will be configured with a power boom and is expected to be used to install the new launch mount over the trench in the near future. On the other side of the pad, we can see equipment racking has been installed at the tank farm for the Starship pad, which looks very similar to what we've seen in Texas this year as SpaceX worked to build out the Pad 2 infrastructure at that location. Down the coast, Space Launch Complex 37 is almost unrecognizable as much of the site's infrastructure has been raised to make way for two new Starship launch pads in the near future. At Space Launch Complex 40, crews have begun clearing and preparing land for the new landing pad that SpaceX is building there for their Falcon 9 return to launch site missions. Moving over to SpaceX's Robert Road facilities, like the launch complexes, the site has seen steady progress on its Starship infrastructure. Prefabrication of the next Starship launch and catch tower is coming along nicely, with crews now working on the structure for the sixth module and its parts for the shorter seventh section laying nearby. Construction of this tower seems to line up with what we've seen at Pad 2 at Starbase, though no mechanicals have yet been installed here. Nearby, work on the chopsticks for the new tower is progressing, with the arm's structural elements now largely welded together. Over at the north side of the site, the erection of steelwork for the Florida Gigabay is now underway, with a pair of tower cranes currently in use and another pair still to come. Currently, crews are installing steel in the middle of the building that will support walkways around many of the building's different vehicle workstations. Interestingly, a fleet of about 100 Cybertrucks was seen packed at the site. This lends credibility to recent reports that SpaceX has purchased over a thousand of the electric trucks to replace company-owned gas and diesel trucks. To the south, the expansion of Blue Origin's Cape production facilities is also seeing steady progress. 
Next to the new parking garage, ground work continues as crews and equipment work to prepare the site for the new hardware integration building. On the back side of the main factory building, underground conduits are being trenched in and foundation work is underway for the addition to the structure to expand fairing production capability for their new Glen Rocket. With the door on the second stage cleaning and testing facility having never been replaced following a mishap last year, we were able to see that a new Glen second stage was in the building for testing as the company works towards increasing their production and launch cadence. Over near the shuttle landing facility, construction of the new Project Comet support building is continuing with the structure's steel appearing to be complete and sections of roof decking staged for installation. Luckily, Greg happened to be in the air as Blue Origin was rolling their second flight-ready new Glen first stage from their production facility to their integration facility in preparation for their upcoming launch currently expected as soon as next month. At Space Launch Complex 16, Relativity Space continues to build out the launch infrastructure for their Terran R rocket whose maiden flight could come as soon as next year. At Launch Complex 14, Stoke Space is similarly working to build out infrastructure. This pad will be where the company will launch their reusable Nova rocket also as early as next year. And there you have it, another jam-packed space update brought to you by Lab Padre. If everything goes as planned, we'll see you Monday evening for Flight 11. Until then, Lab Padre out.